Hello and welcome back to the 12th episode of Green Speaks. We have a dozen of them now. This week we are talking about Hephaestus, one of the more chill gods. Um, he is the god of smiths and metalwork, so anything having to do with the forge. He is the son of Zeus and Hera, or the son of Hera alone. Uh, in some myths, he is the son of Hera alone because uh, when Zeus formed quote unquote Athena by himself, Hera got jealous. And uh, he was born as a equivalent to Athena, which might be his creativity and her weaving and in that aspect of it. But it's also really interesting that Athena and her and Ares, who's also the son of uh, Hera, is kind of in the same vein that he is also kind of a, a double sided coin to Athena. So he has one notable child, which is Erichthonius, uh, which is Athena, which is with Athena. Uh, if you want a description on. His weird backstory, go to my Ask Athena video. Uh, again, they're kind of this, this kind of in the same vein, in the same coin. He's married to Aphrodite, but they never have children. He's She's actually cheating on him with his brother, uh, Ares. So, which is interesting because of that affair, he makes metal chains that go around their bed. And he goes to the forge one day, and, and Aphrodite fights Ares over. And they get trapped in these metal chains, and... <laughs> Hephaestus invites uh, all the gods to come and laugh at them. Hermes kind of leans over to Paul and goes like, oh, I'd, I'd love to be under that with Aphrodite or whatever. You know, bro talk. So the reason that this ugly smith god is married to the goddess of literal love and beauty and sexuality uh, was essentially Aphrodite was so beautiful that Zeus feared that she would start a war on Olympus on who would want to marry her, because everybody did, and so he was like, hey, Nobody doesn't like Hephaestus. Hephaestus gets to marry her, uh, meaning because of how Aphrodite is born, she's his great aunt, or he's their brother and sister because other birth story. We'll talk about when we see Aphrodite episode. Um, anyway, his attributes are hammer and tongs. Tongs, going more back to that uh, ideal of smithing uh, and what he's associated with. He has three pretty important epithets. He has calceus, uh, meaning of bronze, and then polytechnes, which is many crafts, and poly, meaning many, and then craft, or technes is tech, which is where we get the word tech. <laughs> and his most important one, chylopodium, uh, podi, meaning foot. Um, so he is of the dragging feet. Uh, when he was a baby, he got thrown off Olympus. <laughs> it depends on who's telling the story, um, but in some version it's Zeus, and he gets thrown as a baby. And gets crippled that way, uh, and then in some versions of Hephaestus is grown up, and he takes Hera's side in an argument and gets thrown off that way. Hera is, you know, gives birth to him, is angry, and throws him off Olympus for some reason. Or uh, he is formed, he's born with deformities because he doesn't have a dad. In some versions where he's only born of Hera, and in the versions that he gets thrown off Olympus, he by Hera, he comes back and makes her a throne that uh, that uh, ties her to it uh, as retribution. So he's very much a, a retribution kind of god. He's not a god of retribution, but he's very vengeful, uh, kind of with the whole Aphrodite affair and, and tricking them. So he has three festivals. He has the Calcia, which, um, you know, goes back to that epithet of Calcidius, um, and that's a festival for metal workers in Athens. Uh, and then also there's an unnamed festival on Lemnos. It has to do with purifying the island. Uh, it has to do with fire. He, when he gets thrown off Olympus, he falls to Lemnos, uh, which is an island kind of in the middle toward Asia Minor um, or modern day Turkey of the Aegean. There's a big volcano on there. So the idea is he was a native god that kind of got, was brought back to Greece through trade and other forms of communication with Lemnos. There's also a huge volcano which goes back to his um, fire and metalworking. Uh, he also has a temple in Athens called the Hephaestum, which might have been used commercially also in Athens. He's linked with uh, Athena and Prometheus with fire and crafting. So more into like how he was used in real life. He's the god of the smiths and smiths are not places where aristocratic thought takes place. So he's very much of the lower class, and he kind of, he and Hermes kind of oppose Apollo, 
um, because Apollo very much represents the idea of the the higher up and the, the upper class. Smiths create weapons, and that's how a city defines itself against its enemies. So you kind of need the smith to have a city in the first place, uh, which is interesting because Hephaestus is mocked on Olympus and the Iliad. It, chapter or book one literally closes with the Olympians like throwing something at him and he falls over and everybody laughing. But you know, he's the one making the jewelry and the thrones and the everything for the other Olympians. So it's very much a mirror of reality like every myth is. It's cool. He's one of the gods that if you make him mad, he's kind of like Hades. Like if he doesn't get mad that often, but when he gets mad, it's justified. <laughs> that is all for this week. Hopefully next week will be a little bit more concise and more... <laughs> Again, again, it's finals week, and uh, because of the way I set this up, I haven't been able to get a recording area in the last couple days. We'll figure something out, but I might take a break for Christmas. I don't know, but that is all for this week. As always, we have the Instagram at Greek Speaks, uh, and as always, if you want me to talk about a specific myth, put it down in the comments. Have a nice week.